Hey Wiz Good Dog, you will never be able to guess what kind of video we're making today. What is this going to be? A skit? A commentary? Reaction? It's a reaction. We're making another reaction video. We're, we're, we're reacting to this video called The Manufactured Authenticity of Brett Cooper. I've already seen this video beforehand, and so I know exactly what Senor Jose here is going to be talking about. And I want to give my thoughts on it because I thought this video was really, really interesting. There's some things I agree with, and then there's some other things that I don't agree with. So let's just jump right into it. Let's get started. On November 27th, 2023, Merriam-Webster declared that their word of the year was authentic. If you're like most people, you probably read that headline and went, huh, and then moved on with your life. 2023 wasn't just the year for authentic, it was also the year for the new right-wing darling, Brett Cooper. During that year, she saw her channel rise enormously, and currently the comments section with Brett Cooper now has over 4 million subscribers and she's one of the most prominent voices on the conservative media company, The Daily Wire. For those that love her, she's the bright-eyed, clever Zoomer who is giving a youthful face to conservative commentary, and her detractors would describe her as a phony cutout regurgitating propaganda while gaming social media. I wanted to dig a little deeper than either of those readings, though, and understand her not just through the videos she creates, but the context she exists in and how it reflects our own desire for authenticity. Like many people, I have known about Brett Cooper for at least a year and a half at this point, which is about how long I've been watching Ben Shapiro, which kind of feels like I'm confessing to like the most heinous crimes right now. But I've said all kinds of controversial things on this channel, and so if you get mad about me coming out as a Ben Shapiro fan, then don't <laughs> wait until you see my other videos. Now, Brett Cooper and Ben Shapiro, they work for this company called The Daily Wire, if you didn't know already. And they have all kinds of social media personalities that make their own content on their own platforms and they have their own talk shows and stuff. Recently, something I realized about the Daily Wire as a whole is that they each have their own unique ways of expressing opinions and sharing the news. And so they all don't just talk about the same exact thing. We got Matt Walsh for the Edgelords, Ben Shapiro for the Religious Boomers, Brett Cooper for the Gen Zers, Jordan Peterson for the Armchair Psychologists, I don't know who Michael Knowles is for because I haven't really watched his content. And then there's Candace Owens for the religious black people who is no longer with us and she's starting her own show separate from the Daily Wire. Now Brett Cooper is one of these Daily Wire show hosts that I started watching pretty consistently recently. And so that's probably why this video here popped up in my recommended. And so because of this, my recommendations are not as doomy and gloomy as they once were when I was just watching Ben Shapiro. We get to learn about Gen Z fashion trends and like other trends that are stupid and whatever. And then when I want to have updates on current war stuff and like other Joe Biden fail videos, then I go to Ben Shapiro so it's all good, we balance it out. Then if I'm feeling extra bored, then I can hear all about how Catholicism is the best religion in the world by Candace Owens and stuff. So yes, I am a Daily Wire fan, and I am aware that they may be a little bit controversial, not just with their politics, but also their business practices, and, you know, them being toxic sometimes. But it doesn't matter, I need to get my news from somewhere somewhat valid, and so, you know, I, it's, it's either this or I go to Fox News. Is Mr. Bertram a good show? Another video about that another time. Uh, let's continue. During the 2020 COVID lockdowns, Cooper started making social media videos for PragerU and Young Americans for Liberty, perhaps feeling that this was a more authentic expression of her value. Ugh, she, so the, she looks so much older in this TikTok that he's showing here than the videos that she makes now because, oh my goodness, I watched a style theory video recently about how Gen Z looks so much older than they should. And I thought about that and I'm like, dang, I 100% agree. Even I look much older than I'm supposed to look at 17. Something that that style theory video explained is that Gen Z have adopted this makeup style from various trends on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, and whether it was intentional or not, the makeup makes them look older, okay? Some people, they put the makeup on their cheeks so that it makes their jawline and their cheekbones look more defined, and that makes them look older because young people, they have baby fat. And so when you have a chiseled jawline and cheekbone kind of formation, you look older because it looks like you don't have that baby fat. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? This TikTok here that we're freeze-framed on, Brett Cooper looks like she's in her early 30s because of that makeup, like what's going on? And funny enough, Brett Cooper made a video like a week or two ago talking about how a lot of women on social media, they are committing to not wearing as much makeup as they have. Because like I just said, too much makeup and all this stuff, all these trends on social media, it makes people look older. And so if you cut back some of that makeup, you'll actually start looking your age. 
all right? It's very interesting. And throughout Brett Cooper's video, looking at all these videos of women taking off all their makeup and looking younger, she's she's praising them. She's like, yay, let's go slay, girl. Get that, get that makeup off. You look so much younger. You're, you're like dialed back 20 years. Let's go. Anyway, that was a side tangent. Let's move on. Here's another example, this time from the video. Women believe bears are safer than men. This is responding to a social media trend where women expressed how they've been so traumatized by sexual assault that they would feel safer with a bear than a strange man. I made a video about It was that. meant to illustrate a very real fear experienced by women, and Brett Cooper comes very close to addressing that point in the video. Violence is sadly very prevalent in our society, and it's heartbreaking to see that so many women genuinely believe that a bear would be safer. Coming at only halfway through the video, this would seem to set it up for a very interesting and nuanced conversation about how women express their discomfort, and perhaps how men can do a better job of picking up on that. But instead we get when humans have been asked what species should prevail on earth they don't even say their own kind instead of discussing the traumatic impact of sexual violence and how it was highlighted by this trend on social media this video is actually about how people are too anti-human you can care for the earth that feeds us and keeps us alive and breathing and healthy without hating yourself and calling for your own extinction i think women just want men to stop sexually assaulting them how did we end up talking about people leading humanity to self-extinction? There's a web of talking points connecting these narratives together, but the leaps in logic she makes creates commentary that isn't informative. It's just a jumbled mess. Okay, this is the first point in the video that kind of just makes me go, rrr, 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 you know? Yes, the man versus bear situation is one of the most ridiculous bundles of spaghetti kind of conversations we've seen in a while. There's so many layers to the conversation because, like, like I said in my own video, there's the people that take the situation literally, and there's the people that kind of understand the metaphor and what it's supposed to mean. The people that take it literally will imagine women going up to a bear and be like, ha, fluffy, big puffy and then they hug it and then they're best friends and then next thing you know the bear eats the woman's face off wow how gruesome what this metaphor analogy is actually supposed to represent is that women are so fed up with manly men and manly men are so toxic and they're so stupid that women might as well just be around bears and get their faces eaten off and so both interpretations of the situation kind of seem a bit off but that's the point if your girl is saying that she metaphorically wants to be a, with a bear, then you need to look at yourself and change something. It's that simple. But of course, since the situation of a woman being with a bear rather than a man is so, like, stupid and controversial and people want to give their peace on it, that's the thing that people make the content about. That's what I made the vast majority of my uh, commentary segments about in my own video. So yeah, Brett Cooper is contributing to the crowd that are discussing uh, the situation of it being taken literally, as well as shifting it into a more of a, an analogy standpoint, but not technically the analogy that I explained earlier with the men changing themselves from within and realizing their mistakes, but rather talking about how humanity has degenerated itself into hating themselves and hating what they've done to the world and wanting to reverse it by killing men or something like that. Now, out of context, that sounds very schizo. Like, what is Brett Cooper talking about? How did we get here? Like, what, what do you want? Why are you taking it literally? But if that sounds schizo, then all of her other content sounds schizo because that's a very normal thing for her to discuss on her channel. And me personally, I do agree. It is uh, very concerning that people are willing to throw themselves away on behalf of the planet out of the guilt that we are destroying it and men are manipulative and all that stuff. So in that sense, this is kind of a anti-conservative kind of uh, point here that Jose is making. I know, it's very mind-blowing, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I had to break this down and explain it just for me to say, yeah, he just doesn't like the conservative thing that Brett Cooper said in the video. As well as pointing out that she just kind of went off the rails on the topic, but I'm here to explain. It was totally called for on Brett Cooper's part because she talks about stuff like that all the time. She wants to express that this man versus bear argument is another example of people wanting to discredit humanity, but also specifically men. Despite them being very important individuals in society, they contribute to a lot of success. A world without men is a world not worth living. In that sense, she is advocating for her ideals in that it lines up with a very specific conservative worldview, apparently unaware or willing to ignore that those ideals happen to dump all over women and Generation Z, often on spurious terms, and since- Stop saying Generation Z. 
Whenever I hear the word Z to refer to the letter Z, I think of Dr. Z from Borderlands. They took the boy out of Boy Scouts, where we see oh, Brett we Cooper go. upset that the Boy Scouts of America are changing their name to Scouting America. When I was a kid, I desperately wanted to be a Boy Scout. Everything they did sounded so much fun. You know, they would come over the camping trips. I just like desperately wanted to go. But of course, because I was a girl, joining the Boy Scouts girl. was not an option. Obviously, duh. My mom was like, suck it up, babe. There's nothing you can do. There's something really sad about this. A little girl just like Brett Cooper now has an opportunity that she didn't and desperately wanted, and Cooper seems to think this is a bad thing. This will be a simple but very important evolution as we seek to ensure that everyone feels welcome in scouting. Everyone did feel welcome! That's why this is so ridiculous! There was boy and girl scouts! Everyone felt welcome, except literally her, who was not allowed to do the cool stuff Boy Scouts did because she was a girl and the Girl Scouts didn't offer the same activities. It seems needlessly harsh telling other little girls to suck it up when the very easy solution of letting girls join the scouts has existed for several years now. The principle supposedly being argued for here is that boys and girls need spaces exclusive to one another. Male camaraderie and community is vital. They need to play together. They need to learn together. They need to fight together. They need to push themselves away from girls, just like girls need spaces to grow together away from men. That is important. This supposed principle really just boils down to administering strict gender roles into children. Camping, jamborees, paddling, and other outdoor activities aren't inherently gendered, but presenting these as the domain of boys is just a way to exclude girls. Girls like Brett Cooper. With this segment in mind, if there's one thing that I really want people to understand, it's that gender roles are important, but there's a time and a place for them. Say that there's a man and a woman and they're like dating or they're married or whatever, they're living in the same household and stuff. Typically, the man is the one that's working and he's out of the house and he's the breadwinner, he brings home the dough. And then the woman stays home and cleans the house and then she'll have dinner prepared when the man comes back. What we see nowadays is that both the man and the woman work which is totally fine. Even my mom has a job, and she is also the breadwinner, along with my dad. Can there be two breadwinners? I think so. Then at the same time, sometimes the man also does chores. Maybe they both do half. The man will tackle yard work, taking out the trash, cleaning the bathroom, and then the mom does the laundry, the dishes, and then she cooks food. I don't know why I started calling a mom and dad all of a sudden, but whatever. Sometimes what ends up happening is that they both start arguing about who is supposed to do what. Sometimes one of them might have a twisted ankle, and then they stay home all day, and they're like, Babe, can you do the dishes this one time, please? I can't stand. And then Babe will go and do the dishes while the other Babe is on the couch with the twisted ankle. When you have a more loose dynamic that is consistently loose, like they both do the trash, they both do the dishes, they both clean the bathroom, for some reason that's when we start seeing problems. And I am speaking from personal experience, this is something I have seen myself, I'm not going to say from who, because that is private information, but anyway. Sometimes the man and the woman go in and out of jobs, they have all kinds of jobs and they switch to them and they get fired, they quit, all that stuff. The man is going out and he's working every single day, he comes home really late, and then uh, the woman is there home for a few days because they don't have a job yet. And so the thing is, is that they're home playing video games all day. And then they have the house all messy and stuff. The dishes aren't done. The, the trash is still there and it's not taken out to the dumpsters, all that stuff. So the man comes home and he's like, what the frick? You were here all day. You didn't do any of this. And so now I have to do the dishes. What is wrong with you? And so then they have an argument about it. What was talked into these people at uh, one point was that it doesn't matter who is supposed to do the dishes or who is supposed to do the trash. All that matters is that whoever is home at that time and whoever is working at that exact same time, that's what determines who gets the specific chores. If one person is home and the other person is out working, that is that person's uh, opportunity that's home to do those chores because they're the one that's home. And so what else do they have better to do? Playing video games? Heck no. And then if it's the other way around, same rule. If you're going to work uh, with a dynamic kind of chore schedule, then that's what needs to be done. Of course, jealousy will arise. One person will make dinner three nights in a row, and they're like, can you please make dinner this time? Because they're both home. They're looking at each other. Hmm, there's no food on the oven. We need to figure this out. Why don't you make food together? Or if there's other chores that need to be done, play rock, paper, scissors. One person will do the dinner, and then the other person will uh, take out some trash and stuff and, like, clean the bathroom. I don't know. 
Arguing about it is not going to get any of that done. So that's my take on gender roles. Now as for boys and girl scouts, I absolutely agree that boy scouts and girl scouts should revert back to their tradition. We should keep the boys with the boys and the girls with the girls. They are not going to mix. We need to exclude every other gender that isn't a boy for boy scouts and then same rules apply to the girl scouts. We need to, it's the whole point is to segregate them and have all of these uh, different activities for them. Your argument is that this just makes them grow up with these strict gender roles and it's very oppressive and it's like whatever. Now it is true, I have seen it all over the place. All these girls, they're like, wait, I wanna go camping in the woods and sleep in a tent. Why can't the Girl Scouts do that? Oh, heck no, this is unacceptable. I'm gonna become trans and join the Boy Scouts. And then now what we're seeing is that there is no boy or girl scouts. It's all just put into one. It's like school. All right, you're going on a field trip, basically. If you, as a little baby girl, do not enjoy the activities that girl scouts do, then leave. If you want to go camping, you can go camping with your family. If you or a loved one are suffering from tomboy syndrome in a family member, let them be whoever they want to be, but whatever you do, don't get them anywhere near the HRT. I honestly don't know why a tomboy would want to join the girl scouts. Like, it's clearly not for them, okay? Making the Boy and Girl Scouts thing woke, that's just completely backwards. If you want to do boy things as a girl, and girl things as a boy, there are places you can go to do those things. It's that simple. Having the opposite gender invade the boys only space, that is just... That's just like the trans people in men's sports, okay? It's like the same thing. And so, in my conclusion is, uh, Jose, I don't agree with you, and... It, it, that's about it. I know I'm doing exactly what Brett Cooper's doing. She's like taking the situation of whatever she's talking about and then she spins it into completely different stuff. But that's because we need to share like a, either a different perspective on the situation or we need to use an analogy or another example of something to get our point across in order for the viewer to completely understand what we're saying and where we're coming from. Sometimes it's not as simple as, oh, let's talk about the situation. Here's my first point, here's my second point, okay, we're done. No, uh, when you want to get across a point, there's extra steps. You share your first point, your second point, and then you share an example, an analogy, and then your other points on those, then you can conclude the video. So, with that being said, let's continue this video. I'm talking a lot, and so I'm gonna cut a lot from Jose's video here that doesn't matter and stuff. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about the things that I wanna talk about, so yeah, let's continue. As a bit of a quick recap, the story of the frat boys at UNC Chapel Hill who surrounded the American flag isn't the brave act of courage that Brett Cooper presented it as. Rather, it's them standing as a bulwark against a valid form of protest. Early in the day, pro-Palestinian demonstrators had taken down the American flag and replaced it with a Palestinian one to protest their university's financial ties to Israel in light of the violence in Gaza. When the Palestinian flag was taken down by the police and replaced by the American one, the demonstrators tried to put it back, only to be met by the frat boys who formed a barrier around the flagpole. The frat boys were effectively silencing a form of protest, which is an important part of free expression, all to defend a symbol of that expression. In this case, a symbol of freedom becomes more important than the actual freedom, and is then celebrated because it supports a particular type of right-wing politics. And so these boys became heroes who are given half a million dollars to have a wild party, not because of them engaging in some kind of brave political action, but because they served as useful props to demonize a group of protesters the right would like silenced. I don't know why we have to sit here and mauled over a Palestinian flag being taken down and replaced by the OG American flag that is meant to be propped up there on the campus. And I'm not saying like, oh, we shouldn't be having different flags we put up. We only need the American flag. That's not what I'm saying. The Palestinian protesters, they took down the flag first and they were trying to put up the Palestinian flag for support as a form of protest. That's fine. Okay, they're protesting. It's freedom of speech, whatever. And then when law enforcement showed up and uh, prevented them from putting the flag back up, yeah, that's a little bit iffy. They are censoring some form of freedom of speech and protesting, whatever. When the frat boys do the same thing, they take down the Palestinian flag and they put up the American once again, that's when we have a problem. The frat boys are practicing their freedom of speech, okay? People, when they're protesting, they fight all the time, okay? People will fight over the tradition or fight over the cause. That's literally what's going on here. I think if there's one thing to have an issue with, it's the law enforcement taking down the Palestinian flag, not the frat boys, okay? They're technically 
censoring and silencing the Palestinian protesters, and that's no good. If I had to guess, this whole situation with the frat boys, it's, it's probably like all the other stuff that's going on at the New York and Columbia universities, where everyone is littering and destroying things, and uh, sometimes assaulting Jewish students and preventing them from going to their classes, all that stuff. That, that was probably why the law enforcement got involved and like, you know what? Pack it up, people. Get that flag down from there. Let's put the American back up. You're done. Go back to class. All that stuff. Because when protests get violent, the law enforcement have to be involved. And so maybe they did have a, have a right to uh, take down the flag and put back the American. And then when the protesters refuse to, ab to, to abide by the law enforcement, well, the frat boys came in and they did it for them. It's hard to say who is 100% in the right here, but one party is better than the other. And demonizing the frat boys over the law enforcement? I don't agree with that. Okay, I'm just gonna say right now, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think the frat boys are doing, like, basically the same thing that the uh, the Palestinian protesters were doing. So, uh, moral equivalence, hashtag pee, pee and balls. Okay, let's continue. Bright Cooper's videos have this highly produced vibe that attempts to camouflage her in this react space. But she hopelessly gives away the game with its boomeresque splicing of movie and TV clips. Some of these cutaways are references that are so old, I can't imagine she has the faintest clue what they are. Benny Blanco is not a quad six, and he has Selena Gomez wrapped around his pinky finger. Maybe there's hope for you yet. That was the cutaway to the Dukes of Hazard, a show that ran from 1979 to 1985, ending 16 years before Brett Cooper was even born. This sort of reference is fitting in that Brett Cooper's commentary often sounds like it's coming out of your grandpa's mouth, but I suspect any youths who recognize the Duke boys are probably only understanding that because their dad or grandpa sat him down and made him watch a couple of episodes. I watch old movies and shows. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what kind of critique this is supposed to be. The Sopranos is a show that I enjoy because you never know when it's going to end. Spoiler alert, the fifth season, or was it the sixth, it ended cutting to black. Okay, there was no actual ending. Okay, that's how you know I watched it. And I make references to that show all the time. Just like Brett Cooper. She's literally me. Okay, we should just like get married or something. All right, she's my, she's my princess. She's my bloody sweetheart. But maybe she wasn't the one that watched that super old show from 1979 to 1985. Maybe it was the editors that understood the references. But like still, can Gen Zers not have free will to watch old shows and movies like my brain is melting from hearing what jose said like i'm like at a loss for words so we're gonna move on from that there's a line on the daily wire about page that reads we're building the future you want to see and when they speak to their audience they often use grandiose terms about how they're going to change the culture and take it back from the left you'll also hear folks from the daily wire make reference to andrew breitbart's famous saying that politics is downstream from culture. It's important to remember that The Daily Wire is presenting itself as a political project, spreading conservative values. One of the major differences between The Daily Wire and other conservative advocacy groups is that The Daily Wire is run as a for-profit business. As such, it's far more aggressive with its advertising and other monetization practices. Among other things, this is one of the main things from this video I kind of agree with. If you want to advertise yourself as authentic, being a part of this big Daily Wire company is not a way to do it. At least be honest, okay? If you want people to watch your videos because you are quote-unquote authentic, nah, that's, <laughs> that's not gonna work. But does that automatically label Brett Cooper as a horrible content creator and she is the most uncredible person on the platform? Heck no. Like I said at the beginning of this video, every member of the Daily Wire that makes content and commentates on politics or current news stuff, whatever's going on, what's good in the hood, they have their own personality that they can integrate into their videos. And Brett Cooper is uh, one of those people. And so me personally, what do I go to the Daily Wire for? I want to know news, all right? I want to, I want to, I want to be cultured on what's good in the hood right now, whether that's like in the mainstream news or on social media. And Brett Cooper talks about social media a lot. Okay, we talk about all kinds of TikTok trends, and so I'm not necessarily watching her videos because she feels like a real person talking to me, and like we're we're like on a little um cute little um dinner date and stuff, and like you know it's just like kind of cute. No, I'm not going to that. I'm not I'm not watching her videos for that reason. I want to know what's good in the hood. All right. And so, yeah, Jose, I agree with you. Uh, advertising yourself as authentic and then not being authentic, contributing to the business. No, that's, that's kind of cringe. But what you going to do about it? Hey, but a quick look at the Glassdoor reviews for the Daily Wire reveal many former staffers who were attracted by the mission 
and were then chewed up by the demanding work hours and capricious leadership that uses the genuine desire these people have to help the conservative movement to exploit them as workers. To give you a better sense of that, here are a couple of the reviews. Must sell soul. Pros. At first, it's cool. You're excited. Got your dream job sticking it to the leftist, soy riddled, emasculated man. Famous people walk by. Nice. You made it. Cons. They blacked out the windows so you can't tell what time it is. They make it very clear they don't care about your work-life balance. They set it in a town hall, which more so resembles a Hunger Games announcement. Despite horrible things happening to people who work there because they had none. Big Wig owns a Tesla and gets in like Batman, but dresses as if gay. It's hilarious. They rail against the left as if they're any better. They ignore the real issues in favor of making fun of sad little leftists with half-brains. When you start there, you're high on making a difference, but if you're not an idiot, you quickly realize the only difference you're really making is dividing neighbors, spreading hate, real godly of y'all. If you have a real conscience, you will not like this place. Must be willing to sell soul to conservative devil. That's why Candace Owens was kicked from the Daily Wire. I actually know the real reason, so I'm just joking. But still, that's why she was kicked from the Daily Wire, all right? It's because she didn't sell her soul, okay? She's not there to spread hate. She wanted to spread love and positivity and preach Catholicism and stuff. And so now she has her own show where she can just do that, just, just that, all right? She can be quote-unquote authentic. But yeah, I can totally imagine this employee review being completely true. When you are working for a big business, there, it's not always going to be sunshine and roses. Is there any evidence of this business uh, Daily Wire being not all sunshine and roses? Well, there's not really much, but it's out there, okay? And that's just that's just what happens when you're a big business. Even Donald Trump. Do you think he's a billionaire right now because he is the kindest soul ever? Sometimes he's a kind soul, but sometimes you have to do some shady things. That's just what it takes to become a billionaire. Elon Musk allegedly fricked a cat to death and stuff and he hid the evidence and nobody ever found out about it until years later did he actually frick a cat to death i don't know but he probably did if you or a loved one are suffering from billionaire status uh check their hard drive do i watch the daily wire because i think that these are kind souls no i watch the daily wire for the news do i want to be just like ben shapiro no no not not identical Wait a minute, Ben Shapiro, it all makes sense. Wasn't Daily Wire founded by Jeremy Boring and bloody Ben Shapiro? Wasn't Ben Shapiro the co-owner, co-founder, whatever the frick? It's owned by the Jews. It all makes sense. It's the Jews. It's always been the Jews. What the frick? Daily Wire is a half Jew owned business. What the frick? Would you rather have your big businesses be owned by leftists or the Jews? I'd pick the Jews. Let's continue. There's a trend right now of people trying to figure out whether popular figures in the media are industry plants. And there are certainly people in Brett Cooper's audience that believe she is one. But I think there's a bit more going on here. The overwhelming majority of artists attacked and accused of being plants are young women. The idea being that they are not capable of attaining talent, fame, and success on their own at such a young age with no help and therefore are immediately suspect. Yeah, let's be real here. If you are like my queen, uh, Brett Cooper, a young an attractive woman, you can make it far in life on the internet. You will get monetized in like two nanoseconds. She actually has a personality. She actually has valid input on situations and whatever the fuck she's talking about, okay? She is one of the last people on YouTube that I would ever suspect to be an industry plant. Adopting that harsher messaging is, I think, part of how this platform changes you. It hardens you and calcifies your opinions. And it dehumanizes the other side so much that it becomes so much easier to use the most hyperbolic language in describing them. And it's a shame to see someone who's only 22 years old falling into that same trap. Maybe it's simply too late for her and she'll keep producing these terrible videos, getting increasingly harsh and mean and hardened by this space. And that will be her new authentic self. It's a shame that someone as young as me at 17 years old has also fallen into this trap. And that has become my new authentic self. Hey, what you gonna do about it? Well, then there you go. I guess that's everything I wanted to talk about. Now, this original video by Jose, it's like over 40 minutes long. I'd highly recommend that you watch it because there's other things I agreed with, but I'm not showing them in my video because I just don't really have anything to say. I will link this video in the description and the top comment of my video here. Yeah, I'm rushing out this uh, slop reaction video because I'm going to a summer camp thing for the whole week. 
So I'm schedule uploading this video that you're seeing right now, and then I'm going to work on another video after this that I'm going to schedule upload for the next week. Maybe it'll be a news min or something. The show where we talk about multiple things because there's too many things going on, on the internet, but I'm not sure. I got to figure it out. Am I an authentic YouTuber? Heck no. You can barely even say I'm authentic on my second channel, okay? I have a podcast on the second channel. I'm more authentic there than I am here on the main channel. I still have to integrate some amount of robotness and, like, corporate behavior because if I'm willing to put myself out on the internet publicly, and then I need to be prepared for potentially thousands of people hearing me say vile things, okay? So I kind of need to treat YouTube as a mini business, uh, whether or not I even get paid, which I don't get paid. That's just how it goes. If you want to commit to the grind, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta be a, a mini Ben Shapiro. The day will come where the Professor Teague's channel will be taken over by the Jews. Sub to the second channel, follow the Rumble, Instagram, Twitter X, TikTok, and join the Discord server. Follow all the social media. Bye-bye.